can't believe we are starting the program. Oh, no. It's happening right now. Hello, <laughs> and welcome back to Alpha Book Club. This is our online interactive book club. You guys know what it is. You can join right from your computer. <laughs> What's a computer? I'm Rachel Hine, <laughs> not Maud Garrett. And joining me as always is the lovely <laughs> Maud Garrett. <laughs> Yo, Maud Garrett. <laughs> I don't know who this Maud Garrett is because I go by another name, Mrs. Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> How is everybody the same name? <laughs> oh, hello. Welcome. Mm, I'll be an you. American for this one. <laughs> <laughs> and Hercule Poirot. Yes, Hector Poirot. <laughs> I have deduced who it is. It is the one armed man. It was Thank you. <laughs> it was <even> <laughs> that will be a million dollars, please. <laughs> a million francs. What? <laughs> a million what? I will not pay in a that A million francs. Oh, francs. It still doesn't Fonks. sound like what you're thinking it sounds. Mm. <laughs> but that's an exhausting payment. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our <laughs> Alpha community. We missed you guys. We hope you had a good Thanksgiving break if you're in the United States. Um, and that you missed us because we missed you. And it's been two weeks. We've been waiting two weeks. Mm. To reveal that we have. who done it on Murder on the Orient Express, which we are reading by Agatha Christie, and last week, no, the week before, uh, was was troublesome because some mm. of us, mm. one of us, read ahead, mm. and who did that? And I have the evidence right here. There is a bite mark, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. It was left behind there was, by the There culprit. is some evidence. Mm. The one Maud Garrett. But now bit we my all book. know. That Maud sounds Your like big. a hasty little thing. Yeah. Your beak. So my we're going book. to revisit <laughs> our beautiful murder board that we love so much. Thank you guys backstage for making it for us. Murder <laughs> board! <laughs> Woo! Murder, murder, bird, board. Mm, I've had one so Girl? <laughs> she. <laughs> <laughs> She gone, girl. <laughs> she bored. I, I thought know. we were trying to do she murder board to uh, Beyonce surfboard. Out of oh, surfboard. I was like, are we, is I trying to? Riding right. right. on it, thinking, thinking about it. Murder board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Perfect. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Done. Mark. Yep. So we're gonna go through <laughs> the end of the book. We're gonna talk about who done it, who we thought did it, mm. what we thought about the book, mm. and then if you guys saw the film, the, the new film, which we did, Magna we're gonna talk it. about that. Yeah, we did. I saw it too, but I wasn't with you guys. Cool. Yeah. You're a little under the weather. I was sick. Mm -hmm. mm. Can you deduce without evidence what that actually means? <laughs> <laughs> what? Mm. It sounds like a code. Under, under the, the weather? weather? Yeah. She didn't want to hang out with us. Mm. I was drunk. No, I was just kidding. What? <laughs> I was drunk. <laughs> this is drunk. No. Um, but if you guys are joining us, did everyone finish the book? Mm -hmm. Were you guys right? Make sure you're joining in on the chat because the best thing about this book club is that we can chat with you. So we're going to revisit. Our murder board. Actually, uh, Hector, would you like to, mm -hmm. to go revisit I it? I would love to, yes, of course. <laughs> Here we go. You were just so good at it last time. Wait, I forgot my Wayne. Okay. Oh, that's very important. It's the most yeah, important yeah. part. And uh, hopefully you guys oh, have yeah. noticed that we're um, a little dr little dress a little, dressed, a little, a little, a little, little differently. But just wait. Um, yes, getting in character. honor of Murder on the Orient Express. Hector. That's good wine. That's so, it. I think Knox made a really great point. We should all really talk about who we did think the murderer yeah. was. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about it is that no one's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's uh, such a yes. good Southern draw. <laughs> it's amazing. Rachel, so, who did you land on two weeks uh, ago? So, I was, was I orange? I think you were blue. That was blue. blue. Yeah. So, I thought, yes. So first I thought that Mary Debenham was too obvious because of that first sequence with them, with her and the colonel. Mm. And I thought maybe she had a different secret that she was hiding. Mm. Then we were, and then I thought Mrs. Hubbard was too big and loud to be. That is so not true. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't think that at all. I thought she was in perfect character. You know what, Bob? <laughs> Can I just say, Me? I would have never cast you as a Mrs. Hubbard. Until, until I saw now. Michelle Pfeiffer, um, yeah, a very beautiful blonde woman, and I'm like, you know what? I think you could do it. Now I can now I can see well, you I doing can. a Mrs. Hubbard, but before, which is from the book, couldn't see it. But then they cast well, they, the, the casting. Oh, the, the casting yeah. is different. And All there over the place. A lot it's of changes. Not Willem Dafoe. Not, it's we'll Colonel definitely Abbott talk Dock. about the movie. 
Exactly. But um, I thought that it was either these Let's two. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. I thought that it was these two, that Mary was the daughter mm. or the sister, mm -hmm. and that Mrs. Hubbard was mom. Was mom. Now, yeah. I did try to give you a hint last week just to get one ball what was rolling. That? You were trying to get this happening. Um, no, I was trying to tell you guys that the mother of uh, the murdered, well, the, the, the woman who gave the Armstrong birth, case. Thank mm -hmm. you. The mother. She uh, died. Because it was an actress. No, she didn't. Oh, the mother of It seemed of as the... if she did die, but she did not die. And it was an actress who was American. And I was like, good Lord, who is an American woman of that bold who could be an over-the-top theatrical person? Yeah. yeah. And but neither of you got it, did you? Which is why I bit the book. <laughs> I didn't want but to. I was so uh, close. No, I know. I know. I was I, really I close. Yeah. I figured it out, Maude. And when you dropped that very obvious hint, yeah. I felt like you gave it away, and I was mad at you, and I didn't want to humor you. So that's why I didn't. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. I remember that uh -huh. you did. Mm -hmm. You were like. I was like, Maude, I just figured it out. Oh. But you wouldn't. You wouldn't address <laughs> it. But then I was yeah. also very highly indicating that it doesn't actually further much. I just needed you guys needed to have something. It's you some something of it tangible. Does. And Hector, who did you think it was? I settled on <laughs> Mrs. Obert, mm. along with Hildegard Schmidt because of the H handkerchief, mm. which she said was not hers, but I but believe she was she right. It was not I hers. Have secrets. Mm. That's what I I believe that she was too meek, and that she was also maybe perhaps being an actress. Oh. I don't know what accent I'm going into now, but, <laughs> but it's I fine. Like I love it. it. I love it. It's good. Um, Very good. So I, I want to say this and, and pitch it to everyone else as well, um, because some people are saying already that the ending of the book was not not great. Mm. I don't. I think Agatha Christie left so much of it in the dark, where it was there wasn't enough planted kind of things that could seamlessly tie it together, like. We were questioning everyone. Mm -hmm. I almost wish there was like three that were absolutely guaranteed and maybe one thing contradicted it and you actually were formulating somewhat of a plan. But by the time it all unfurled, you were just like, what? There were a few That's such a stretch. The yeah. fact that he got out of nowhere, that yes. the Italian man who dealt with cars was the chauffeur. The driver. Yeah, you know, there like, were a few that were huge connections. And I remembered sort of when I was finishing the book that, um, a lot of her books follow a similar structure as many famous authors do um, it. but it's that like a certain number of people in one scenario and mm -hmm. and those kind of red herrings and What's figuring it, like it out it's like a closed room murder yeah is what it's called, something, or something like that. Yeah. close quarters murder yeah mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. there are only a few you know it can only be the people who are present um, One and, of the murders and, is on the train with us right now. And supposedly the clues are all there, but I do f agree with you that some of them make sense. Like, obviously we knew that her family members were here, but then it's like, and then there was the driver and also the maid. And you're like, okay. What is happening? We didn't get enough of these clues, but Hector. And it wasn't even a sweater unravel. I could, I would have loved to have had like yeah. one lead and then being able to, un, mm -hmm. you know, have it unfold like that. But it was just kind of like mm -hmm. you were so blind Cited by so much of it, and then it was this mic drop. It was and you're just, just like, yeah, what? it was just an like announced. They put it out there, and explains it, and they have a quick moral quandary, not super, not really, mm -hmm. and then it's over. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was very quick. But yeah. Hector, can you gingerly do the honors of yes. flipping? I will now reveal who, in fact, was guilty of the murder. Brace yourselves. <laughs> Hold on to your underpants. Ooh, nice gently, gen gently, gently, gently. Gentle, 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 gentle. <laughs> Gingerly. It was all of them. <laughs> they all did it. <gasps> oh. <laughs> except, except one of them. Yes. Hercule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. And I love it. This whole book. plan was meticulously planned out with like <coughs> even Dang. Um, alternative scenarios. They had plan mm -hmm. A, plan B, plan mm -hmm. C, mm -hmm. but they did not plan to have the infamous Hercule Poirot on board. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, that kind of screwed up their entire plans. Really? Yeah. Because, well, having him on board, but also the train um, getting derailed. Mm. Physically. Mm. Because they were going to make it look like someone had snuck off the train and they would assume that it was some random person that had been in Miss Hubbard's mm. cabin that had yeah. stolen um, the uniform that had left the uniform somewhere kind of obvious. All of and these that was clues still a would bit be vague, wasn't it? That laid, but thing. they I feel like if if Perot was not there and 
Ratchet had just been murdered and all these clues were there, people would have been like, well, looks like some, some vagabond yeah. mm -hmm. snuck on the train, you know? And that's what the so that sort end of was as well. foils them. Really? Mm -hmm. And I think he almost knew that. He's like so impressed. He goes, guys, you nearly got me. Like that was yeah. pretty tight. You've had this figured down. And it's understandable why the emotions are so high around this particular case. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, I wasn't here. Yep. You know, I'm going to wash my hands yeah. clean from I this. Don't I don't super blame I, him. I kind of like the, um, no. the way that the, the, kid. that the movie decided to end it with Pro Row. If we can talk about that for a second. Sure. Because they cool. had. Let's talk about the movie. They had, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they had Kenneth Branagh. Basically act like, first of all, his character was a superhero. His character was also Sherlock Holmes, mm. Benedict Cumberbatch combined with Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. But also, like, <laughs> yeah, I I honestly really didn't like anything about Brana's <laughs> portrayal of Perot. He was so chewing up the scenery. And, it was and ridiculous. And so incredibly just uh, fix your tie. <laughs> yep. She'll get it. No. Soon. <laughs> she gets it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 I actually have one on. Oh my god. Yeah. But that's like, oh, you just little... did the like bloop thing yeah. to yeah. me, basically. Yeah, so far away. Yeah. yeah, Mod's a bully. You're right. Uh, She's so a bully. So Poirot is then a bully? Is that what that is? <laughs> or has he just got severe OCD? In this, I yeah. didn't. I he didn't like him. I hated the beginning. It was so stupid. It was so <laughs> dumb. It was so cheesy great. acting, wasn't it? it was I really will put cheesy. my walking stick here because I know <laughs> he will try to run away and then come back and hit his face. <laughs> I mean, I didn't oh mind gosh. that. I was but like, what I liked the ending of it was that Proro was so about justice that he had a gun <laughs> and he was like, it's up to you to make the choice. You yeah. must kill me or, uh, I know. Or, no, or, or, that's or, so stupid. Or, or go to jail so because theatrical. I will send you to jail. It's so theatrical, no. so over the top. And, and, and in the book is not at all. He's super subtle. He's super almost meek in a way. He's, but he's getting slow. them to underestimate him in the book a little bit. Mm. And Kenneth Brano was just, and I, I love and respect him. I think he's very talented, but it seemed like he was a little in love with his own because he directed it too and yeah. I was like dude you gotta okay. chill a I little bit just put some light onto one moment where mm -hmm. I was audibly just like ah <laughs> in the theater well remind me oh my dear sweet Catherine oh, oh yeah <laughs> my love, my why love. did they add that what was the purpose why does her Perot does not need a dark backstory? Yeah. It didn't add <laughs> anything. You didn't understand why. Yeah, it just was kind of pointless, and it didn't add a dimension to this character, which is think what I think they were trying to achieve. Yeah, and it seemed like they were trying to make it seem as though, he, you know, there's like one more, one more. You know, he's kind of been pulled out of the game a little bit, and and sort of reluctant to do anything. And it's just like that doesn't. I don't know. Here's what was fun about watching the movie with Mott. Because she had read the book. <laughs> and when we were walking in, she was like, way to have the movie ruin the book for you. And I threw it right back at her. I was like, way to have the book ruin the movie for you. And yeah. she was like, mm, touche. All right. Because <laughs> yeah, I went did. into it. I had read three quarters of the book. Oh, so I, So watching the movie was like the first time I experienced the ending. Mm. And like Thierry says in the chat, yes, I did see the movie before finishing the book. And I like that I reacted with a theater room with people that had no idea of the ending. Uh, a cumulative gasp at the reveal is better than alone. And I and I was I like turned to Maude and I was like, what? Oh and then Maude was like, they I, all did it. They all all, so of smug. <laughs> yeah, all all of them. All of them. Yeah. And then I was like, this is crazy. And what I like about the here's the other thing too. I just looked up the original uh, mm. year that this book came out because. 1924. 1934. 1934. Yeah. I, was I have to keep <laughs> reminding myself. 1934, mm. before World War II. Yeah. Before we, probably my grandfather was born. We, maybe, we, maybe. I don't know. But like a long time ago, <laughs> Agatha Christie wrote this this story. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, it's a it's so fucking good. Yeah. But it's just become so classic <laughs> that it's be, like it the the twist ending the ending of everybody being in on it reminded me of at least it 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 acknowledged the fact that it was too much a co coincidence that all of these passengers were on this train and they eventually we learned that they're all connected it reminded me of the moment in the trailer for the movie identity with john cusack uh, where they're like wait is your birthday the same day uh, yeah mine is too yeah and they all had the same birthday and you're like what is that weird movie gonna be about and, and then you watch it and it's a, it's it's weird. it's it's weird but it's let's like weird. but it starts with a with a <laughs> with a dramatic question of what if a bunch of strangers met in a hotel room and they all had the same birthday and you're like, <laughs> you're like, what, is, what does that Why mean? Why would I watch that? Um, I will also <laughs> say yeah. two things. Yeah. One, last week or the week before, um, some folks in the chat suggested keeping the murder board and keeping track of 
wine that we've um, oh, yeah, drunk, yeah. Yeah. Mm. tangents we've gone on, books, I've thrown. books you've thrown, mm. Mm. Ang- cannibal and or lost references, I guess. Online. We got a tally? Oh, I'd move your foot, Hector. <laughs> I would move it because this is... <laughs> well, that's a good bounce on That's it. a good bounce. Oh, I that was bit a very it, good I've bounce. thrown it. <laughs> and it popped into it. my head because I have a really quick tangent, which is that in the movie Identity, have you actually seen it? I think I did, yeah. Okay. Yes. So there's, can I spoil it? It came out a long time ago. Go it's ahead. a bad movie. 2004. So, <laughs> it's, a bad, it's, it's real <laughs> silly. So you find out that they're all char- that all the characters are m- multiple personalities in one dude's ah, head, and they're cool. killing each other off. And one the bad one ends up being a little boy. And when they go back and flash back to like how he killed everyone, there's one point that makes me laugh every time because he like it's gonna take too. It's not gonna work without a visual. Look it up. It's really funny. <laughs> I don't want to say. How it does anymore. a little boy kill somebody? He like he's Pow-pow. in the he's in the car with his mom, and their like car has gone off the road. And he puts his like hand on the window, and she puts it on, and it's really cute. And then he moves backwards, and then she like steps back, and a car. And then it, yeah, <laughs> it's so fucked up. That's great. But it just made me laugh because it's just so, it's a really, it's really like, for movie. me, it's like Meet Joe Black. Whenever I think about that, I cannot help but laugh because it's such a crazy, <laughs> ridiculously <laughs> violent death scene that Brad Pitt has and oh he bounces God, he off does. of cars. He like, he and it's hilarious. And that movie's kind of ridiculous, but yeah. it's also horrifying. It's horrifying. Yeah. It's that mm-hmm. same thing. Yeah, cool. Um, people are actually <laughs> weighing in on their thoughts with the movie, which I think is great, including the Tamaranian, I believe, who had said that it was as if. Kenneth Branagh gave himself the instruction to act at a 14 and yeah. told everyone else to go at like an 8 or something. Yes. Yeah, fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's something I see in movies a lot where one person, like Charlotte Copley in every movie he's in, mm-hmm. is in like a different movie than everyone else that's mm-hmm. like yeah. ramped up to a million. That's a great yeah. observation. And it's great. Or in Into the Woods. Um, Chris Pine. Chris Pine yeah. and, and Meryl Streep go full musical, like full camp, and everyone else is like, a little understated. Yeah. Kind of like in Beauty and the Beast where you've got yes. an amazing Luke Evans and yes. Josh Gad who yes. is Hector, I mean Hector McQueen in mm-hmm. this movie mm-hmm. and then Emma Watson didn't get the memo or mm-hmm. the correct direction because she was not a Disney princess. Yep. Oh, that's Come at me. That's, nope. that's harsh. I but agree. she's a Warner Brothers princess, right? Because because her role in Harry Potter is are great. What? The, the, her her cuz we all love Hermione. Do we still love her for that, or yeah, we, or no, we already have we already turned on Emma Watson for that? Hold on. Well, yeah, we should do. Read the book. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Mm. Read the Mr. Book. I just meant princess <laughs> in the sense of like she's movie royalty okay. because she That's was fair. Hermione in Harry Potter. Unless I'll we, give you we, that. We've already forgotten all those. No, we haven't forgotten okay. them. Okay. No. Good. No. Good. I hope you guys haven't replaced Fantastic Beasts and Johnny Depp with the Harry Potters, uh, right? Can we replace him? Yeah, <laughs> digitally. They maybe. could. Yes. They yeah. just bring Colin Farrell back. Yeah. Just be like he yeah. got stuck in the Polyjuice potion. Or recast forever. him. Recast him like Dumbledore. Yeah, even though that actor passed away, I don't give a just shit. Just say yeah. he, he changed him. his identity so people can yeah, find he's, him. He's we don't care. Apologies. Don't yeah, block we, people we on Twitter care. because they ask you about it. J.K. Rowling. Boom. Called you out, J.K. Don't do it. Yeah, man. That not sucks. cool. Did they were really they were they aggressive and threatening? They were like uh, they were like so and so actor gets hit fired from Harry Potter because they were like drinking or something yeah. because of, for some reason. Um, it's right. crumb. Mm-hmm. No, not crumb. Oh. It's crab or goyle. It's oh, one of them. Oh no, no, yeah. he's dealing drugs. Yeah. 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 But Johnny Depp gets to keep his job, and then she blocked that person on Twitter. That's a good point, though. Mm-hmm. It is a good point. Some people be consistent. Can't handle the truth. Be consistent. It's like you want to be mad at Mel Gibson? Go for it. Guy's an asshole, well, but especially after what he just said. His kid but only done one movie, hasn't he? But what's that? Depp, it's power and status. Mm-hmm. They get more. No, Mel Gibson was nominated for an Oscar. He wasn't. Last year. Mel Gibson was Hollywood royalty, and yeah. I, and he's definitely been shot down to uh, crap. He was nominated for. But an, oh, and after that stupid I'm thing he said, I, he's going to be done. But but a couple years ago, he wasn't allowed to be in The Hangover, and I'm like, that's cool. But Mike Tyson's in those movies. Yeah, yeah. Mike Tyson put his hands there's on a woman. There's a there's yeah. definitely a, a double consistent. standard. Wait, it's an easy one. Don't be a dick. Yeah. That's it. Or show it to people at work. <laughs> oh, yes. There you go. Sorry. Don't like do that. it. Don't, Don't do it. Do it. Um, but Johnny Depp is in this movie, bringing it back. And also I was going to yeah. say, um, when you were talking about all the, the sort of classic uh, mystery tropes and yeah. endings, the thing, and someone else called this out in the chat, that this reminds me of that is parodying um, these kind of mysteries is Clue, which is yes. one of my favorite movies ever. Yes. Um, Multiple endings. I need to watch it. <gasps> Have you never? Maud. I'm wearing a flower. Have you never seen <laughs> I did that today. I was trying to put my headphones on, and I was like, why aren't they? 
going. I think I was too young. I was having a sick day, and it was a midday movie, um, oh. and I was like, "Whoa, this is like not in the you decade that I was born." Love so. it. The sense of humor is yeah. super up your alley. Mm -hmm. It's for me. Is it's it written like, by a Brit or something? It might be. You know what? Just because it's funny, we'll just we'll just assume, assume it is. that it's. We'll just it give the Brits the credit. A similar. Um, movie to The Princess Bride when I was yes, younger yes, that yes. taught me a certain yeah. sort of uh, like <laughs> um, punny, a smile wit. It's really yeah. great. And it has that like, they do multiple endings at the end oh. and they're all sort of, they're like, this is how it could have happened or it could have happened this way. So is there an adventure in a movie? Yeah, it's really great. Yeah, I'm down. You should watch it. I but this, watch it. this reminded me of that quite a bit. And, um, and I feel like if you ever read her other books, she, Agatha Christie does something really smart in that she like kind of tweaks it up every time. Really? So okay. the next one that they're teasing where he's like, he's going to Egypt and then they greenlit Death on the yeah. Nile. Oh, they already have. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, we're going to get a Prorose. Death on Denial. We're going to get a right? Prorose uh -huh. Cinematic Universe. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's going to cosplay as Poirot, do you think? Is, that gonna, is it going to be a thing? Who's the demographic for this bloody movie? Because I it was know. only recently out and our cinema was pretty empty. Yeah, yeah who, sure. I was going to say, who was at Murder on the Orient Express besides A couple you guys. of dudes. Uh, yeah, a couple of guys who were dragged <laughs> onto dates that okay. did not want to be there. But oh, and like, my favorite maybe is... Maybe it'll land me some. Before the movie started, there was this couple in the top left and the woman leaned over to the man and it was so adorable. She was like, is this based on a true story? Like, Aww. as the movie was starting. And I wanted to lean over and be like, yes, yes it is. Yeah. It all happened. <laughs> it was real. Well, uh, it so is I don't know. The, but they the, seem to like it. The case of <laughs> Daisy... Um, is inspired, I think, by the Lindenberg baby who was kidnapped oh. in the in the 20s oh. sure. um, in the U.S. But yeah, not a not a real I story. Need to brush but up on my 20s history. I want to talk more about the movie, okay? Just because I wanted to go back and rewatch the 70s version, which is really really great, mm. and it has oh, it has some really great um, actors. Someone in it, actually tweeted us a picture of it. Did I see Tim? Was it Curry? Was he in there? This is the I 70s version no. right here. Someone's looking at it. Can right someone here, look up the cat? Yeah. Look at who's in that. Yeah. Is that Mrs. Hubbard? If that's a good uh, Mrs. Hubbard. I think, she might, Mrs. Hubbard. I think she might be um, the, the. Mary. Oh, yeah. And Anth isn't Mary. that um, Anthony Perkins? So the other thing uh -huh. that I noticed about the movie is that you had such an all star cast and it was so great, but everyone only really got about three lines of dialogue at most. It was all um, mm -hmm. Kenneth, and it was the second highest was Monsieur Book. And then the mm -hmm. rest of it, honestly, they, they didn't really get to say too much. Yeah, it they were like. there were so many characters and it was we like wh why did you want to have like a hot hot young book who loves prost like that was so, so unnecessary. unnecessary. Why? It was Albert Finney. Yeah, there's it's a really good cast. It was big fish. Um I'm trying to remember who else is in it. This is a I would probably I don't but the problem is, is yeah, yeah. 74 Agatha Christie's novel has been turned into a movie. I'm now like less interested in watching other versions of the story because I just watched this new movie and I just read the book yeah. and I sort of know the ending that I'm almost less interested in. If this was on TV, if this is over like the Christmas break and I'm at a family and they and this is on TV and they're watching it, I'll sit down and be like, oh, "Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm super ready to mm -hmm. watch this." Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to seek it out. I don't, you well, know. That's the thing about Mm, especially mysteries the, with the, with that aren't thing. as yep. character driven. Yes. Like the difference with is Gone Girl is yeah. you're, it's so much more character driven and when you get mm. the reveal you're like oh man and there's that unreliable narrator thing and you, you want to go, go back, back and, and yeah. figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Whereas this is very plot driven and the people are plot devices yes. and they're archetypes and they serve a purpose which is to start back from here figure out how they all connect yep. and now that we've seen so many mysteries follow this path, I mean, this was um, very new at the time, obviously. I know, but it's similar man. to what did we read? We read something recently where it was like, oh, uh, even a wrinkle in time, where we were mm -hmm. like, oh, these themes and these time travel things are really feel like we've seen them before in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But it was sort of revolutionary. Was at the time. Yeah, it was yeah. revolutionary at the time. Or what was the other? There was another one. Oh, um, the Giver. Sure. And all that sort of young um, adult. Not great, but the 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 tropes that we now recognize in young adult dystopian yeah. kind of world. Yeah. That was sort of- That one was a much more yeah. recent book though. Yeah. In comparison, like, like yeah. 1934, that's pretty impressive. It is. Yeah. And I'm glad that I read Agatha Christie, number one, because she's like one of the all time authors ever. I'm glad that I read Murder on the Orient Express, a super famous story of hers, but I will probably never read an Agatha Christie book again. 
and I'm not super excited about other murder mysteries. No. Interesting. No. Do you think you would like the Jim Butcher series though, which yes. is more supernatural? Yes. Noir and Be more yes. Modern? Because they're, because they're not, no no no. Because only because <laughs> in the same way that like and when we read like 1984, Maude was pulling her hair out yes. mm -hmm. and she I'm kept, she, 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 kept <laughs> she kept telling us every week she's like I like fantasy I'm interested in fa when I was when I was reading this I was like this helps me figure out what kind of Genres, literature I like what yeah. kind of genre I'm drawn to what about a different one though okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah not from 1934 because here's what we've done so far we've done um, not a murder mystery but we did house on haunted hill yeah mm -hmm. uh, haunting of hill house rather yes. which is like supernatural ghost and I'm s into that mm -hmm. and we then haven't we read our sins. We should do another horror one soon. So I'm into that. Basically, Rachel, what I'm saying is I'll read more stuff that you recommend. I'll absolutely do it if you recommend it. Yeah. But what I'm not, I'm not going to go be like, what's the one. number one like mystery that's being sold right now? I don't care. I'm not no, going to. No, no. I, okay. Because I also <laughs> recommend based on what I people think, what I, I think know. people will like. And if we had enough time, the one I would want to do is a just straight mind fuck of a book. What's that one? Um, House it's of Leaves. It's called Mindfuck. Oh, House like of Leaves. But it's like a thousand pages long. Ooh. Oh, I'm the And third. it's so good and so <laughs> weird. And like the further you get into it, the type starts going around the page. Like it's very, oh, I like it's that. very weird. But I don't know how we'd read it in a month. I've got three things happening. Sorry, I have to list them all off because I was patiently listening to the conversation and so much was happening, not only Thank in the chat, but in my mind. Number Thank one, you. do you think that you would uh, enjoy murder mystery more if there were tangible evidence that you'd missed that had been dropped in such a subtle and clever way that you'd be like, ah, if I had only, like, I yeah, know that you're I think more some of them on. are more. Because I felt like yeah. this book was like nothing, 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 nothing. Ha ha! I know like, that you're, yeah. you were very stuck on the. the um, Rightfully so, on the evidence that came out of nowhere that Poirot just knew. Yeah. Although I think that the number one thing that I didn't even realize was the fact that they said a few times, maybe once or twice, twelve stab wounds. Yes. Completely, completely like mismatch, out of order. Like there's no yeah. order to and that. And twelve people on the train. Yeah. That's the that's the one thing where I was like, oh Agatha, you got me, girl. Yeah. You got yeah. me good. I should have been paying attention. Twelve people on the train, twelve suspects essentially, and twelve stab wounds. Yeah. Other than that, you're absolutely right. And there's yeah. a bunch. So I think maybe to answer your question, probably mm -hmm. I would like maybe a, a a a story where there's like there's almost multiple versions, multiple oh. like like two or three strands of like it's definitely one of these three. Yeah, yeah. You almost have to pick which one and kind of make your case for it as a reader and let your emotions get involved like I think it's this guy because yeah. of this but, but at the end they might go it was actually this and then you go oh shit there was that I would say more yeah. mysteries are like that yeah. where yeah. you know I read a lot of them but where there's either the person that it's obvious that so when you're reading it, you're like, okay, well, I, I presume it's not the obvious person. Sometimes they flip it and the then Scooby it Doe is, effect. <laughs> right? But then yeah. there are other characters who, like I said with Mary Debenham, where it is a different secret or a different plot point. And one of the things that the Jim Butcher books do, which is more noir, mm -hmm. is there's sort of an A mystery and a B mystery, yes. cool. and then they end up connecting. Oh, cool! I like that. Yeah, which like is that really lot. fun like because it's always episode. something that's kind of like yeah, like you back good into TV. The story. Yeah, where yeah, they, they kind of mix in together, plot, mm -hmm. and that doesn't take away from the enjoyment. That's one yeah. where the the um, format actually really helps because as soon as you you get the first mystery. And Jim Butcher too plays on like different noir tropes, like the femme fatale and yep, different th like stuff that. like that. I like that. Um, but and it's very much like '40s noir cinema, which is really mm. fun. But then as soon as someone else comes into the story, you're like, oh, that's the B plot, but you don't know how they connect. And yeah. the fun is like trying to figure out how they're gonna connect. Okay. So we should definitely do. That'd be Jim great. Butcher. I know. That'd be yeah, I need to what get back into them. Two and three that you wanted to talk about. Uh, two. Uh, Demarco draws was like, uh, Rachel, do you know about the Golden Compass series? <laughs> I just wanted you to make a face to, to respond to that. <laughs> That's all. I can't wait to. I'm gonna watch the movie over the break, you guys. Daniel no, Craig. No, don't Ava watch Green. the movie. Don't watch the movie. Read the hey guys, read the book instead I'm of gonna read, read the this book. film. I cannot no. wait. I'm so well, excited. I'm gonna no, finally. Cool. And the third Stephen, thing, uh, super quickly, is whose side are you on? <laughs> Did you just happen to have not that mine, obviously, in your wardrobe? Where what? did this costume come from? Yes. Did you just happen to have it? I did. <laughs> I had an ill-fitting vest in my wardrobe that I brought to work today, <laughs> and this is my hat, and this is my mustache for real. Did you and make this? This is my mug. I did not. No. Where'd you get it? The wonderful producers made this thing for me to put <gasps> this bad boy on. A little bit of tape. It is such a divine mustache. 
Can we talk about the casting a little bit? Because Thank you, I love Michelle Pfeiffer, and I thought she did probably the most work, dramatic work in this movie, yes. obviously, being who she played. Mm -hmm. But I just, the changes that they made, which I understand they did because they cast Michelle Pfeiffer, so they sort of changed what she was talking about. Oh, how like how Ratchet was hitting on her? Yeah. It was, it was so weird. It was weird. It was so Ugh, weird. It, that Johnny was weird, Depp, was, and yeah. well, you had to hate this guy. So the first yep. way to do that is to make yeah. it. But she they kind of make her, her, her a bit like of a femme fatale. Yeah, she's yeah. A they, bit of a, they make know. her instead of this kind of outlandish, larger than life personality. Like I would imagine, I'm trying to think of mm -hmm. someone who would who would play that uh, character really Which well. Which character? Mrs. Hubbard. Oh right. As in the book, like a southern. Like Kathy Bates. Kathy That's Bates so, would you know be what I mean? Like that, like she Kathy would be, Bates would be that great. type of yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your mom is that what you yeah. said? <laughs> no, well, that's the thing is Michelle Pfeiffer reminds me of my mom, and so it was very. It's always no. weird when I see her and stuff, but <laughs> it just having that like where she's like, "I'm looking for a husband," and I was like, "What are you? Why? Yeah. Why are we doing this?" And then Johnny Depp was. I get that you wanted to be someone slimy and gross to play Ratchet, but he, he was. He played the role well. But he yeah, was. He did. I thought he was chewing the scenery a lot too. Yeah, of course, because he's a gangster. You're you got to hide. Yeah, it was like I need you to so do a job for much. me. I'm a gangster. Like, so over the top. I thought it was. I mean, so is Ratchet in a way. Yes. Yeah. I actually was yes. like, damn, Johnny Depp's doing a good job. He did a great job. He's a very talented actor. Yeah. He's probably a piece of shit human being. They yeah. probably yeah. shouldn't get any more work. Yep. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, no, Disney. Penelope yep. Cruz, <laughs> yeah. she was like, she had yeah. her three lines. She's like, I need to stand out. I yeah. need to do something with them. So she was a bit yeah. melodramatic. Get in, get out. Uh, uh, Josh Gad was great. Was right. great was as Hector. Except really nice and subtle. The I get sequence. that you're on a train. Like, <laughs> it's really boring to <laughs> film a, sh a mm -hmm. movie where you're just talking in a room the whole time yeah. on a train. Yeah. But why? I, it's, Why? I, I don't know, man. Why I, I, him? I, Why I watched, that? I watched a review on YouTube. Somebody threw up of this, and they were very, like, well informed. And they said it feels like the only way that a major studio could would Justify green light it. this movie yeah. is if they turned it into a superhero film. Yes. So where, just it's, don't, where it's well, okay. Yeah. Why did this movie need to be made? Yep. It didn't. No. No, it, it didn't. didn't need to be made. It didn't. It, it doesn't no. really translate if you need to change it that much. Yeah. You're not capturing and, what's and what's good about what's it. What's so interesting is, well, it, it just seemed like a Kenneth Branagh vanity project. Mm -hmm. that yes, it, was it did. Put across his desk, and he's like, "I'll do this, and I'll be pro, and it'll be great." And my mustache will be oh, the boy. biggest one. But like, real, if you're trying to like be true to the source material, it probably should have been a high-profile television miniseries yep. mm -hmm. with On the a, BBC or with something. a cast that was that good. You know, nowadays in TV, you can HBO. reach out to actors of that yeah. caliber and go, but this is going to be like a HBO miniseries. Yeah, it's HBO, gonna be, Stars, yes. it could be any of those, mm -hmm. yes. AMC even, yeah. um, and it could be five episodes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even need to be that long. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't need to have the production series. budget that it had, no, and I think that they were trying to expand upon Looked how can we though, make this yeah. such a good movie. Oh, those sweeping location mm -hmm. shots following the train was just stunning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're right, they were just like, ooh, what we have to work with isn't enough, so we're just going to give it CPR mm -hmm. and push life into it, but the life that it put into it was just so, oh. It the just made it a, yeah, it made it like a dark drama yeah. action movie, which is like, it's the same thing, not to go on another tangent, but like with The the Mummy, with Tom Cruise and the Dark Universe stuff, where it's like, it. why are you making movies that are all the same when, when mm -hmm. because what's interesting about them is that they're different? Because they still have a ride at Universal. But you could make a yeah. Mummy movie that's I not, I love the, the Brendan Fraser mummy movies. Oh, it's so I they're so bad. Love they're so but they're, good. But they're, One and but two. No, oh, they're so, so fun. Good. And Rachel Weisz I actually so good like in that because she. I Rachel like Weisz was amazing. Two mummy Returns is better than, than the Mummy. I agree. Yes. But they're both bad films. They but they're fun. Cool past lives. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. Hey man, here's a real quick. Here's my real quick pitch on the Dark Universe, especially after Guillermo just said it. Guillermo oh, del Toro was like, I regret not doing it. He should have been in charge of it. Yes. Of and secondly, one? of the Dark Universe. Yeah. Guillermo del Toro yeah. passed on it. He was given the opportunity, apparently, by Universal to like to head he this, this whole franchise endeavor. Number two, I, I, I re realized this months ago when in promotion for that movie, they put out a Universal put out a black and white sizzle reel of all of their old movie monster mm -hmm. classics. And I haven't even seen those movies, and they just they're the most iconic. Yeah. They're the most famous, the most beautiful, you know, looking mm -hmm. classic movies. And I thought, imagine if they made modern movies with even set in the present day, starring Tom Cruise, but it was black and white. 
And imagine practical effects and all practical, this cool, But imagine yeah. it, even with special, with CG, but it was black and white. Imagine how cool it would have been would if be a cool. multi-million dollar franchise was like, here's how we're going to be stylistically distinctive from all the other crap but that's out there right now. I would have loved that. Five different 50-year-old di white dudes as all the characters. Why yeah. are you doing that? I know. That could have been so interesting. There's but so many characters. who was going to be Frankenstein's monster? Uh, Javier Bardem. And I was, that would have been I cool. Was, I would have been on board with that. And I was really hoping that they were going to get his wife, Penelope Cruz, oh, to yeah. be the bride of Frankenstein. I think it was and then I heard, Angelina Jolie. And I was like, I'm cool with that, too. I would have been cool with that, too. Cool but all the too. other ones, it was yeah. like Russell Crowe. Yeah, yeah. I'm still mad at you for Les Mis. Action hero, still Russell Crowe. Action hero, Johnny you Depp as the I'm Invisible very Man. Sorry. Action hero. Oh, yeah, it was Johnny Depp, too. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, wow. but it was, was just like, great. why are you, these are so cool and macabre and interesting. Yeah. Why are you turning it into a Tom Cruise in a plane mm -hmm. yeah, Mission yeah. Impossible oh, movie? Oh, no, a plane crashed? That's in every Tom Cruise movie ever. I know, I and they're it's great in, his, in Mission yeah. Impossible movies. Oh, it's movies, the best. But I don't want that in my Mummy movie. Didn't yeah. you do Jack Reacher as well? One of them? Yeah, but that's at least like, although that guy's supposed to Anyway, in the books is like a totally different character, but mm -hmm. mm. there's some, obviously there's license to take these things and make something new. But what bo bothers me is that making something new is mm -hmm. the same kind of like gray, CG, yeah. action, paint by numbers movie that um, even with all these twists is like, it's just boring. So there's no it, style to it. Does it come down to a an executive or a studio yes. um, safety net, Yeah, basically? Yeah, or? it's just thinking that, well, this will make money because the other things made money but what we're seeing not with murder on the orient express but dark universe is not happening it's um, it's unfortunate but i believe that these huge yeah. studios <laughs> that spend a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of money on this shit have actual proven formulas that that are like if we put this variable and this variable and this variable in the film it will make this amount of dollars which is the only way we can justify spending x amount of dollars but you so don't we can get need to spend x, that x amount of dollars you don't yeah. need to it. we don't get it. the cg looks bad but yeah we got were you distracted by McGonagall? Yeah. No idea what uh, Bucky B is talking about in the chat and how it began because the chat has been going so fast. Well, young but McGonagall. Ra Ra Rachel Weisz needs to play a young McGonagall. In the Fantastic Beast movies. Now, That's probably you what know Bucky's what? Can talking we actually about. just step away, step away, step, step, step away from yeah. Fantastic Beasts altogether? Can we just get <laughs> young Hogwarts? Young Hogwarts? Yeah, even go back to when Tom Riddle was there. We keep mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. back even I further. say, ditch oh. the prequels altogether. Sorry, Harry Potter land. But let's do post-Harry Potter. Let's, I want to see the movies about their kids. Let's do that. Did you and so go in the future. Did you, did you Let's go in the future no. in the year okay, 2040. So here's, mm. Let's here's do that. Thing. Mm. That's I what agree I with do. you that I'm not. Well, so <laughs> if if okay. Because the world of Harry Potter isn't as good as the story of Harry. Harry's story is a perfectly crafted hey. here's the seven thing. book, eight picked, movie thing. Well, I think they picked the wrong character to mm. follow in the Fantastic Beasts. Should have been an American. Piece movie no i mean i agree no no i just think that he's already a wizard and they don't bring you into that sense of wonder it should have been um, a new wizard he's also a or his goddamn friend. muppet yeah he wasn't great enough but he was a foppy, foppy <laughs> muppet. leave eddie redmayne alone a, i did not enjoy that movie but i feel like you have to have an outsider we've talked about this in yeah. storytelling you have to have someone who comes into the world and discovers and it dan time. fogler so, was kind of that yes and so if you and would, he was the best part of the movie if you would follow By a mile. him yeah. into this then you can learn about it yeah um but i am excited minus the john like i'm really upset that johnny depp is the character who's I, playing grindelwald yeah. because mm -hmm. i would love to see the dumbledore grindelwald story unfold mm -hmm and have the romantic elements that it should mm -hmm. they love because oh. they loved each other that's right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i, I like, really want to see it and jude law with the honestly i'm on like, board with jude law yeah, great jude law and and colin farrell in a oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Love love get you and mash that together. i mean yeah. please yeah. i want it make it happen put their flat parts together make it happen gi joe style all little nubs <laughs> sure there's, there's nubs a, there's nubs there there's is a, there's, a bump. there's a there's a shape there's enough but to work I've, with but <laughs> i think um so i would love to see that prequel and i think there are even going back to the original ho houses and all of the characters who started the houses, that would be interesting to me. And cool. I would like to see the future, but you. the cursed child oh, that really soured just, me yeah. on but you, all but of you it. But you guys haven't seen the play yet. You only I know, read the, but it's the, like the, the, the script. And what upset me was that the parts that I liked, we're on a full tangent now, but the parts that I liked about the cursed child, which I read on a plane, were the characters of the two boys. Yep. But they skipped through all their years to get to the parts that they want to talk about. Mm. I would have liked to see them and that dynamic 
from the get-go. And also I felt like they also loved each other. One of them loved the other one a lot. And then they were like, and then they end up with girl. And I was just like, oh. yeah, here we go. But that, it's You bad. know what the solution is? I'm hoping that uh, Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy mm. is going to center around Poe and you make them gay. Yeah, <laughs> That's the Finn. solution. Huh? Yeah. If not with Finn, if Finn's Someone, like, anyone. yeah, if Finn's like, oh, I'm so, I don't feel that way. Poe's like, that's cool. You're missing out. I'm going to go smooch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go smooch a boy, rookie yeah. boy. <laughs> I'm in. That'd be great. Super in. That's the solution. I would watch a Poe trilogy, trilogy. Mm-hmm. Of, I would of smooching. Um, Lots Poe of smooching. Poe. Yeah. Guys, what were we talking about with this book? Where were we at? Did you guys like Mysteries? the twist endings? Oh, we were talking about the casting and how right. who nailed it and who oh, didn't. Oh, yeah. Who else? There's... I, like, okay, I love well, Willem Dafoe. Will, I forgot. Willem, who's Willem Dafoe? Play? Willem Dafoe was uh, the detective from New York. Oh, oh, yeah. But he was like a German like racist. That was, yeah, yeah. that was. Yeah. And then he was like, hey, by the way, yeah, yeah, about that. What's going on? And man. then you're like, but <laughs> I've missed so many key things already that like. I don't even know Oh, why. I liked Daisy Ridley, and they didn't make her yeah. seem as guilty in the movie as she does in the book, I mm-hmm. think. Oh, I felt okay. I, I thought she was, she okay. was great. I liked her, and I no, liked that they, okay. they um, played up more of the romance angle between her yes. and the colonel and what Before that would mean Well, Abbott's dog. Yep. Yeah, Abbott's dog. And the dog, who's yeah, the combined dog. to be the colonel. I agree. Yeah, Book. He was great. Book he was I handsome. liked, and he was fun, but I don't know why they had to have the prostitute in there. Uh, uh, like, if you're oh, going to yeah. make him a young, hot Book, that's supposed to be, like, exposition, but it's like, what? He, we, I know, when he when was, he was it, like, ha-ha, I'm going to touch her on the funny, ha-ha. You're like, <laughs> what? Like, well, who cares, man? When we was run it to show him, that he's, like, aloof and so that, he, that we never are, think he could be in on it? I don't know. other ways to do that, but... Yeah. Um, when he comes in and he's like, is that, t- you are with that prostitute? And she was like, ah, yes. I was like, what? Why? <laughs> what is happening here? And he's like, but I still respect you as a woman. And you're like, okay, this is the worst exposition ever. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a lot of exposition. <laughs> it's weird. Which yeah. works sometimes in a book. Doesn't I didn't mind the exposition about the, the, the policeman, like calling him out in the public scenario, knowing that, you know, he's earlier saying, can you cover the West yeah, that's, en- that's entrance? Fun. And then putting that there and I, I like that I was like good you understand that he's really really smart he's mm-hmm. got his mind switched on in the, the appropriate ways mm-hmm. but yeah book they were like oh gosh he's got like you know the next most amount of dialogue we've got to quickly show what kind of guy he is mm-hmm. in the book he's like a bit of a he's a bit foppy as well but it's at least he kind of like you know he has like had a dinner to do. he has like dinner with Poro before they get on the train like that's his character before yeah. they're but in on the, the book, train he worked with the detective agency didn't he mm-hmm. he, was he had worked with him before yeah I think they needed like a secondary character to, t- to bounce off and for him to not be talking to himself or a picture of his wife. I Who's did. dead? Who was oh, murdered? Wait. Oh, oh, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did <laughs> I like the all. flashbacks. I thought those were done well. Yeah. To yeah, like the, parts of oh, the story. And I also have to mention when they go into the Armstrong case with the flashbacks, mm-hmm. because I was listening to the score for the film while reading the book. Sure. The score, who I'm forgetting who did the score, crap, um, but it may have been... Uh, was it Silvestri? Uh, no, it wasn't Alan Silvestri. I think it was the guy who did the first Thor movie with Kenneth Branagh. I think oh. it was him. Oh, right, right, right. Um, anyway, he did uh, the piece that was called the Armstrong case was this beautiful little piano piece, and it really slowed everything down. I was like, this is good. This is really good. And it made it sad. So I like that. I liked the Countess, too, even though I didn't get why they Dame made Judy her. Dame Judi Dench? No. N- no, the... That was the Duchess, right? Oh. I don't know the difference between a Countess and a Duchess. I don't oh, either. Oh, the Countess the young was the young one woman that was, like, ended up addicted being, to something. Who was oh, the sister. Who's, hold yeah. on. The one whose husband was just, again, so over the top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. when he, like... Punching when someone? He ju- yeah. No, at the beginning, when he <laughs> yeah. jumped up and, like... Cor- like kick, roundhouse yeah. kicked a guy in the oh. face. I looked at Mon and I went, "What are we in for? Yeah. Are you kidding I'm me?" Like, but then later it's like, "Well, he's a ballerina." I'm like, "What? All right, that's how he can kick men with the roundhouse kicks." Like the pointed to. Yeah, it was so um, funny. Ballet fighting needs to be a thing. I bet it is. Um, it is West Side Story. Thank you. Guys, they did. Ja. They did West Side Story <laughs> at the Disney concert End hall point. with the End LA point. Phil, and I didn't know, and I'm really sad I missed oh. it because oh. that would have been amazing. Oh. Yeah, I feel like that. Mm. Raven Wolf says, I need to watch this new movie. Still haven't seen it. Wait for a video. <laughs> Wait for when it's on HBO. <laughs> the the Tamaranian says, 
Clearly his wife's soul is trapped in that photograph <laughs> and he has to solve 100 murders before she can be freed. Uh, can we I would like watch MVP that movie comics? 100%. That would be great. 100%. The, Tam the Tamaranian, is that a reference to Starfire from Teen Titans? Let Ooh. me know. Yeah. It's got to be. I was like, what is a Tamaranian from? This, this is affecting my geek brain. Oh, uh, see, Starfire. I just went, it's someone who lives in Tamarama. No, Tamarama? Yep, which is a suburb in uh, Sydney. Oh, is it really? Beautiful yeah. beach. Beautiful beach. Well, which guys. is it? A comic book or? Oh, never mind. I oh. guess it's not. <laughs> Valerie, no, Hector. No, that was because probably. You got that. regulated. Yeah, yeah, yes, I did. I did. I got served. I got served. Great. Oh, gosh. What else do we talk about? Have you guys read what any other? What would you other? rate the movie out of 10 if you saw it? Uh, six or seven. Six. Mm, five. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. I would okay. not. Whoa. What would you rate Clue? Ten. I give it like an eight. What? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. No, you can have your ten. I love Clue. It's one of my favorite favorite <laughs> movies. What would you rate The Haunting, starring Catherine Zeta-Jones? Twelve. Twelve wow. out of ten. <laughs> I haven't seen it since. Uh, uh, what about what were we talking about earlier? Mm. Um, Crap. Anything but oh, the book. Oh, The Mummy apparently. and The Mummy Returns. <laughs> rate those. Which one? The Mummy. The Mummy Returns. Brendan Fraser. Oh. Rachel Weisz. Are we talking about on like um, uh, my personal rating or as a movie? Uh, I need as a movie first. Okay. As a movie, I'd probably say like um, seven for The Mummy and probably like five for The Mummy Returns. Oh, wow. But on my personal scale, I'd say like nine for The Mummy Returns <laughs> and maybe like a seven for hey, The Mummy. Who was the English guy in that? Rachel's brother? Very, very funny. Oh, I need yeah. to see more of him. Yeah, he he's was in great. something. Every time he pops in, I'm like, hey, it's that guy from The Mummy. Yeah, I, mean, I love what him. What's his name? I love him. I don't I know. Don't remember. Someone in the comments Someone tell us who we like. He should have been way more famous than he was. He was great. I loved it Ooh. when... That little cute kid, too, in The Mummy Returns was adorable. And I love adorable. this stupid bookshelf mm -hmm. bit that they do in the first one and the second one where <laughs> the oh, dominoes. It's great. It's great. I, what, one thing I, Ooh, wow. I think people hate about The Mummy Returns, which is fair, is the sun. The sun should Oh, I disagree. Hardcore and disagree. There, I understand he everybody, like hates, Lloyd. everybody <laughs> hates kid actors. But you compare that kid actor to a Jake Lloyd. No, he to, does a like, good job. He I is just don't adorable want kids and awesome. And, and th See that? that that's yeah, what because that is. Rachel, it wasn't about the love story; it was about responsibility. Yeah, it's family, man. <laughs> that's a perfect sequel. Um, Mummy no, Returns. No, that's great. Orient Express in the vid is not getting a good review at all. Tamaranian gets gives it a solid Clues five. Amazing. Actually, mm. Terry thought it was a seven. John oh, Hanna is seven. the brother. What's John he Hannah. doing? Yeah, he's like so good. Is he on TV? He was I in bet he's on. He's in a funeral, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he is. He's in a couple of those. He might have been in a TV thing too. People love Clue. Mod, you, love and clear. you have to watch it. Clue. Would yeah. you guys? And we'll chat about they're it. They're the closest thing to Indiana Jones. Well, yeah, I know, we've, but now I just watch. a respectful watch. relationship, you know. I think that they were actually really quite good partners. Who, with, Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz? Yeah. There's still a couple times where he did grab her and kiss her. The sort of like, you know she what I mean? Like through the jail. One of them and he goes. To the yeah, air. that was great. Yeah. Because <laughs> he like passed out. That was yeah. great. But when like he's didn't in prison. Take advantage of it. When he's in prison, he like grabs her face and kisses her, and he's like, "You got to get me out of here, lady." Um, Remember that? Yeah. yeah She's like great. all married. I love you know. the mummy movies. And then, man, that uh, that Middle Eastern character is super racist, but he does a really good he does a really good bit. I forget what he says, where he like turns his hand like this when they're riding on the camels. When he said, "Oh, when you know when Brendan Fraser's in the prison, mm -hmm. and they're like, what in do the you do?" In the second one. Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, in the first oh, one. In the first one. They get him out in the mummy, and he they they ask the, the he's like the prison ward and they the prison guard or whatever the the ward of the prison and ask him like, "What did he do?" And he's like, oh, "I had a very good time." Like he says, <laughs> "Very good time," and it's like the best delivery. I love that. That's I'm gonna go watch prison. the mummy movies. Um, I like the mummy more than the mummy returns. Okay, cool. Now that that's happened, uh, we need to figure out what we're doing next yeah, week. Yeah, what we book? have okay. homework what, for next week. So we're going to announce, we're reading, it's going to be a super packed month. We're going to be reading part one of the Southern Cross trilogy, Annihilation. Did you say Southern? <laughs> yeah. In two parts. And that's, if you guys have seen the trailer for the film that's um, coming out that's based on this book, it looks so awesome Whoa. with Natalie Portman, Tessa Thompson. Ooh. Is Gina Rodriguez in it as well? Yeah. Hell yeah. It looks so good. It's Oscar Isaac and it's directed by Alex oh. Garland who did Ex Machina. So, oh, and it looks, it long? yeah, it Ooh. looks so good. So we're going to read the book first. So your Hold homework. On, why, is it, why is it the Southern Cross trilogy? Because there's three parts. Oh, the, Southern Reach. Southern Reach. Oh, the Southern Reach. Southern Reach. Yeah, because the Southern. Southern, 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 Southern
The, well, the Southern Cross is the uh, the star formation that you see in Australia, which is why it's this one also of the symbols of Australia. It's on the flag. Oh. Mm. Now, but what's more important right now, Beacon? What do you think? Is it a so comic book or is it the whole of Australia? Boom! Throw that book, man. Yes. That was a book. That was a book throw line. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's on me. <laughs> oh, I love it though. I love it. It's like anytime there's anything happening, it's like it's a comic book. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Comic book. It'll I wish that we it. were in charge of the camera so we could just swivel it around and uh, zoom in on your I'm face. I'm glad we can. <laughs> <laughs> so homework. Read up to page one hundred in Annihilation. One hundred. Wow, that's like half the book. Yep. That was that's that was zero zero one. Two, yeah. Oh, it's just two. Oh, one. Wait, come back. Yep. One zero zero. There it anyway, is. Yeah, that was good. don't forget, we're also on Goodreads, so if you like mysteries or fantasy or comic books or anything, you can search Alpha Book Club and come discuss with Wait, us. We can talk about comic books on Goodreads? I think so. All graphic right, novels? I right. don't know if you can do like issues, but cool. graphic oh. novels for sure. Can I read the book? And we're also... You want to um, read the back? Yeah. No, we also have four... Back. Real quick, we also have forums on Alpha, so if you can't join us live, you can come. We had like a really great spoiler conversation happening in the in the forums over the long break. So come chat with us if you want to chat with us on the show. Let us know on Twitter. Please, Maud, yes, Scott. let us know what we're in for next week. Uh -oh. Area X has been cut off from the rest of the world for decades. Nature has reclaimed the last vestiges of human civilization. The first expedition returned with reports of a pristine Edenic landscape. What is like the time of Eden? Yeah, yeah. Eden, like, mm -hmm. like Eden in the like Eden. utopia Eden. sort of paradise. Good hope. The second expedition ended in mass suicide. Wow. Don't you say that. That means no, I'm kidding. And the third in a hail of gunfire as its members turned on one another. The members of the eleventh expedition returned as shadows of their former selves, and within weeks, all had died of cancer. Oh, what's this accent? In Annihilation, the first volume of Jeff's, uh, no, Jeff Vandermeer's Southern Reach trilogy, we joined the 12th expedition. The group is made up of four women, an yeah. anthropologist, a surveyor. My dad's a surveyor. Yay, I get to finally <laughs> join in those conversations about dads doing cool things because it's never mine. <clears throat> a psychologist. My mom's a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> and a woman named Maud Garrett. What? <laughs> What's this book about? <laughs> Sorry, I'm screaming into my microphone. Um, the de facto leader and our narrator, a biologist. Their mission is to map the terrain, recall, record all observations of their surroundings and of one another. And above all, avoid being contaminated by Area X itself. They arrive expecting the unexpected and Area X delivers. But it's the surprises that came across the border with them and the secrets the expedition members are keeping from one another <gasps> that changes everything. God, I'm actually really hooked. That's, That's so cool. That sounds so good. That's real cool. Read up to page 100. Anthropologist, surveyor, psychologist, and a biologist. Join Crazy. us on the show, especially if you've read it before or if you're just joining us, join us on the show. Just tweet at join, join every time. Join Team Alpha with the hashtag Alpha Book Club and Courtney will get you set I'm up. I'm gonna try and get my mom to Skype in as a psychologist. Ooh, that's okay. cool. Send us your book recommendations. <laughs> Harry Potter, Golden Compass, anything Jim else. Butcher. Jim Butcher. Jim Butcher. What? Yes, Son of yes. Linus. Yes, the yes. Son of Linus. Song of the Linus, the, Alana the Quartet. The sequel to Peanuts. Tweet at Nerdist, at Geek and Sundry, at Join Team Alpha, or any of us with the hashtag Alpha Book Club. We love you all. Bye.